We know that healthcare is a hot topic, and uh, I want to make a bet that in the next 10 years, DNA will be the center of this debate. As you heard, DNA sequencing can be used, and we can identify the gene of different people and understand how some small differences can make you have cancer or not have cancer. The problem with gene and genomics is that it gives you a bit of a doomsday approach. If you have bad genes, there's not much you can do. So I have a message of hope tonight is that instead of looking at DNA sequencing, like Ben is doing, which is great, we can also look at a phenotype, DNA health. So, um, oops, that's not my slide, but I will move on. So basically what you may not know is that DNA breaks happen all the time in our body. And uh, one way to look at it in, in people is to actually go into the bloodstream. And in the blood you will find white cells. Those white cells, you can zoom on them and you can find a chromosome and you can find DNA. And in this case, you're gonna see a DNA double strand breaks, the worst lesion you can have where the two helix are broken. X-ray is typically one source of damage, that's what I've been studying. But we know diet and exercise can influence those response. And your body will detect it, the cells, and then they will send enzyme to repair those breaks. It's an essential step. We do it very well. As we're talking right now, you've got millions of those events taking place in your body. So there is, if you look at DNA health or DNA double strand breaks, which is the assay we have refined, you have a balance between two phenomena. On one hand, you have the damage that can be influenced by your lifestyle, by what you eat, and then the dooms as approach, your genetics. Not much you can do about this. If you repair poorly, you can basically reduce the damage by simply avoiding the damage, kind of like sunscreen. So the metrics we're using will be helping on that sense. So DNA damage is everywhere. It's influencing everything. Aging is the big one. Uh, the classic process of aging is basically driven by DNA damage. As you have a cell being broken, I mean, I should say DNA broken, you will have uh, a possibility of having a bad repair, and when that happens, the cells can be put into a senescent mode. Basically, it's parked on the side, it will never divide again, and it's a good thing for you. If you don't do that, and the cells continue dividing, you may have cancer, because that cell is supposed to stop, but it keeps doing and multiplying and mutating, and eventually you have a breast cells going into your brain. Not so good. Immunology is another classic example of DNA repair processes, and we know that bad DNA repair will lead to uh, autoimmune disease. And finally, recently, Alzheimer has been linked to DNA damage. Uh, basically, accumulation of DNA breaks in the cells in the brain have been linked to this disease. So it's involving everything. And so my argument is that DNA damage should be measured in everyone, so much as cholesterol test is used right now in the healthcare, and that's gonna be the future. So how it's been done, it's 20 years of process. Uh, we look at the foci assay, which are those, uh, you can't really see here, but there's like little dots on the cells here at the very right. And um, basically, uh, in the past, people would do it manually. It takes a lot of time. It's very biased. But the assay works really well if you do it correctly with a lot of training. What we have done is we refine the entire process. So in the past, people had to do a blood draw. We don't do a blood draw. We figure a way to preserve the blood so you can actually collect the blood at home fix it, preserve it, send it back to us, so you can do it anywhere in the world. It, it comes back here, and it's being processed by robots, by uh, microscopes, and the quantification is done automatically. And the beauty with this is scalable, and this process patented by LBL is now uh, in the hands of, of a spin uh, called Exogen. It's a, a spin-off uh, company, and basically right now those kits are being distributed, they have been tested, they work very well. And uh, this is the result of some pilot study that's been done with a kit we're looking here at about 100 people, and uh, we collected the data as a function of uh, age group, and we're looking on the y-axis. Let me see if I can do that. The y-axis shows the number of DNA double strand breaks per cell, and what you can see is as you get older, you have more and more DNA damage. Just what I was explaining, aging. Those points over there are people who had cancer in their life, and they end up being extremely high, and that's what the software comes back with. It's all done automatically. Those white dots represent damage. So uh, knowing uh, if you're offside, if you're outside this normal behavior, it could be due to things you've done or the environment, as we heard from Ben. So if you fly frequently, if you uh, uh, have uh, medical imaging, you can change this number. And is there anything you can do about this? Um, there's a lot of fear about radiation. And I think by not knowing what radiation really does to you, we don't feel it, we don't smell it, it's kind of hard to deal with it. And you have uh, the New York Times, was, uh, I think, uh, the biggest media that goes against radiation by uh, scaring people and um, saying that medical imaging is probably bad for you, you're probably gonna get cancer from it. Uh, it's a bit of a simplification 
at the population level. I think it's a bit more complicated than that. And the argument here is that if we can measure it, we can alleviate this fear. So let's go back to this diagram, those data we have. Basically, that's the normal range. You here, and then if you do a CT scan, the worst dose that you can get is about 10 milligrams, which is going to give you this kind of offset on this assay. Very well detectable. Now, the argument is that if you are outside the norm against genetic, you can't do anything about it. With this, you can. You can take something like nutraceutical, antioxidant, mitigation, and do you can go back down. It's been shown. This is done in Germany. They took blood from people. They incubated the blood in antioxidant. And they took the same blood and didn't incubate it at all. And they exposed the blood to radiation ex vivo. And they saw if they could reduce the damage. And what you see here, that's before you take the antioxidant. And 60 minutes after antioxidant, you get a 60% drop in the damage. Doing nothing. Your imaging works just as fine. But now you drop by 60% your damage. And the reason we know it is because we can measure it. The way it works is very simple. It's a classic radiation effect where the radiation will break the water into two components. The radical OH can be blocked by antioxidant. And Rebecca will talk more about this in the next slide, in the next talk. So um, another thing about um, uh, this kind of assay is it's very um, actionable. So for instance, here, I'm showing like three individuals that uh, were co collecting uh, blood as they were running with, uh, with the kit that we came up with. And you can see as they're running, they get more and more damage. And then when they stop running, they go back down. So you're going to tell me, who running is bad for you? I should not run. <laughs> well, some people have looked at this. And this is a great study on 20 marathon runner. And that's when they were running the marathon. In the middle of the run, towards the end of the run, they got more damage. OK, oxygen, activities. But look at that. A day after the run, those persons are now below where they were before they run. And that lasts for six days. So that's what it is. Um, a bit more complicated, right? A counterintuitive result that shows you that actually, yeah, you may induce damage, but actually you have a natural response from your body that kicks in. So lifestyle is influencing those numbers in many ways. So the goal here is to use nutraceutical to go from this distribution, which is the data I show you, but not agglomerated into edge, into those data. Because if you look at the data statistically, what's driven here is there are some individuals that will edge faster than others. You can see them. And the problem is, how can we reduce that? So that's my last slide. Thank you. Uh, there's a kit. There's about 600 people currently using the kit. We distributed it. Uh, we had a fundraising about a, a six months ago. And we're now moving to supplement to try to help people protect themselves. Thank you. Thank you.